Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. If you're new, my name is Becky, and this week in this video, we are gonna be doing what we eat in a week. Week two of the three reverse pantry challenge. Basically, the rules I'm following is I'm not going to the grocery store at all, at all, for the month of January. And then in the month of February, I am giving myself a $40 budget for fresh fruits and vegetables if we need it. If we don't use it, that's fine, but basically no grocery shopping for two months. That's the goal. So I had some mushrooms in the pantry that needed to be eaten up. I just made a ton of beef bone broth in order to can because I don't have any beef bone broth canned up right now. So I picked all the meat off the bones and we are gonna be making stroganoff. I'm not much of a menu planner, so you and I are gonna figure out what we cook throughout this week together. The first meal is stroganoff. While the stroganoff is cooking, we're also gonna cook a breakfast casserole for my husband so that he has some breakfast that he can take to work every day of the week and that I can enjoy too as well. Normally I use white onions when I make my stroganoff, but because these were looking a little bit soft, these definitely need to be eaten up first. So we're gonna use red onions in our stroganoff. And I think that's gonna be just fine. I like to cut them really small. And we're gonna caramelize these up. I have my scrap bowl here so I can put my scraps right in there and I'm not constantly going back and forth to the garbage can. We have butter and oil in our pan. We're gonna add our onions. We're gonna cook this low and slow until these onions get really caramelized. We need to add a little bit of salt. I reorganized my kitchen and I have to remember where I put everything. And we're gonna put a lot of black pepper in here. While this is cooking, I'm gonna get the mushrooms and garlic chopped up. We have our mushrooms chopped up here. I chop them up really small. I love the flavor of mushrooms, but I don't love the texture. So when I cook with them, I chop them really, really small so that I don't bite into a big piece of mushroom. Now we have two kind of small heads of garlic that I'm gonna chop up and we're gonna put this in our stroganoff. I cook with a lot of garlic, a lot of onions, a lot of pepper around here. There is one thing that I know that I wanna cook this week and that is curry. I've been craving curry and I think that some of my frozen veggies from the garden are gonna cook up really well in the curry. So that is one thing we're gonna make this week. And then I do have some if you can hear my husband in the back, he's starting a fire. I do have some tortillas, some corn tortillas in the refrigerator that need to be eaten up this week. So we probably will be doing some sort of taco and I have avocados that, and I have cabbage. So we're gonna have curry, tacos of some sort. So we're menu planning together right now because <laughs> I'm thinking through this. And I'm, I honestly am not much of a menu planner. I don't sit there and plan out every single meal, but I usually have a vague idea of what we're gonna be cooking. So those are what we're gonna be cooking. And then we'll probably cook up some sort of freezer meal this week as well. I had this beef broth outside. It was about 40 degrees today. And what that did is it just helped solidify some of this fat on the top. So we can easily remove it because we don't want to can all of this beef fat. Let's get some breakfast casserole made up so that Josh has breakfast to take. Typically I make him a baked oatmeal, but I bought a bunch of shredded potatoes for a shredded potato recipe we were gonna make Christmas and we never did. So let's just get, I'm gonna make this recipe up because I do have a really good breakfast casserole recipe, but I don't have all the ingredients for it. So we're gonna see what we have around here and we're just gonna make up a delicious, hopefully breakfast casserole. In the microwave, I have a one gallon bag of zucchini shredded that was from the garden and we're gonna add that to this casserole. I should have cut this up earlier, but I wasn't thinking about it when I cut the other onions. But we're gonna add one of these red onions to our casserole as well. I could saute these before I put them in here, but I don't feel like doing that, so I'm not gonna do that. I also have provolone cheese. Normally I would add cheddar to something like this, but this needs to be eaten and I don't have any cheddar that's open yet. It's still in its original packaging. So I wanna go through this first. So I'm gonna cut up a few of these and get this provolone cheese in here. I have 10 eggs. We're gonna add all 10 of these eggs. I'm gonna crack them in here before I put them in there.
Before we finish the breakfast casserole, I'm gonna add the mushrooms to our onions. They are very caramelized. We're gonna turn that up a little bit and we're gonna caramelize these mushrooms. This is a way I like to cook where if I have one thing going while I'm waiting for the onions and mushrooms to cook, I might as well be whipping up a breakfast casserole at the same time so I can try to get more than one thing done at a time. We cooked up a little bit of bacon last week and I cooked up extra. That's in the freezer, so I'm gonna go grab that and we're gonna add that to this. All I did is crumble it up, put it in a Ziploc bag, and now we have bacon ready to go for this meal and I don't have to cook bacon again this week. I'm gonna add a cup of milk. The last couple things we're gonna add to this is a little bit of salt. Parsley from the garden. Garlic powder. I don't feel like peeling any more garlic. Pepper. And we're gonna mix. This is our zucchini. I defrosted it in the microwave and now what I wanna do before I put it in our potato mixture is I wanna get out any of the excess liquid. Zucchini is very, very liquidy when you thaw it from being frozen. And I don't want that to dilute our beautiful potato mixture. You can use zucchini in so many more things than just zucchini bread. I love to grow a ton of zucchini and shred it up and I add it to meatballs, curries, pasta sauces, potato casserole, like right here. You know, zucchini bread is high, high, high in sugar. So I wanna to try to use the zucchini in a little bit more nutritious way. And by adding it into things like this, you can't even really taste it and it adds great nutrients. turns out because this is 100% made up recipe. So we are gonna put that in the oven and we are gonna move on to the next step with our stroganoff. Now I need to add some flour. I'm gonna add whole wheat flour because I need to start going through my whole wheat flour that I have. But you could use white flour or tapioca starch or corn starch if you're gluten free. And we're gonna cook this flour. Oh, I forgot to add the garlic. We're gonna add the garlic at the same time and we're gonna cook that for probably two minutes. The flour and butter that we put in here at the beginning and the oil are cooking and they're creating a roux. And that is what is gonna thicken our sauce. Basically what we're making is a cream of mushroom soup. Cream of mushroom soup or cream of chicken soup or any cream of soups are a roux, which is fat and flour or fat and whatever thickening agent. If you're gluten free, you might use tapioca starch or corn starch and then your liquid of choice. And the garlic smells so good, oh my gosh. It smells so, 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 so good in here. This is one of my husband's and I's favorite meals. I'm gonna turn the heat up. And we're gonna cook that until it completely reduces and I can scrape up any flour bits or anything that are on the bottom of the pan and we're gonna cook this for probably five minutes or so, and we kind of cook that raw alcohol flavor out. If you don't use wine in your cooking, no worries. I would just say, just skip it. But red wine, beef, and what we're gonna add next is some Worcestershire. Just, I think that is the perfect trio. Now that this is cooked, we're gonna add four cups of the broth we just made. We might add a little bit more, but we're gonna start with that. We're gonna add a few tablespoons, maybe about a quarter cup or so of Worcestershire. I think I'm gonna add two more cups of broth because I added quite a bit of flour. And now this is just gonna cook and thicken up and then we'll add our beef at the very end. If I was to add the meat right now, it would completely fall apart because it is so incredibly tender. And I want there to be some actual chunks of meat in there. So we're gonna let this kind of cook, thicken. I think the breakfast casserole is done. It sure smells, oh yeah, it sure smells delicious. This is something Josh and I will both eat. The baked oatmeal is basically Josh's breakfast. It's, it's quite honestly not my favorite, but it's his favorite. But I think he's really gonna like this. It smells incredible. I hope it tastes good. I'm sure it tastes good. It's got 
cheese and eggs and potatoes and onions and garlic powder and bacon. How can it not taste good? So we'll let that cool and then we will put it in individual containers. We have the beef broth going here and then in here I decided to go ahead and put the meat in so it could start to warm up. We have this much leftover beef. So I think when we make tacos, we will use this and I'll make some beef tacos. And we'll need to season this beef because this only has the seasoning from the broth. So this is how I like to cook. You know, if I've prepped something extra, I can use this in a different meal. I know that, you know, Josh and I do tend to eat quite a bit of leftovers. We're gonna start going back a little bit on that because now I have a little bit more time to cook a little bit more like I used to when I was just doing dental hygiene and cooking and gardening and things like that. So I wanna get back to that, but we don't mind eating leftovers. We enjoy them, that's what we like to take for lunches. But I wanna get back into cooking a little bit more regularly dinners. But I know that leftovers are not everybody's favorite. So one way to save yourself time, instead of maybe making a big whole thing of stroganoff and then eating it for the next few days, just think of things that you can prep ahead of time and use this and remake it into something else. I don't consider this beef and then making it into tacos, I don't consider it leftovers. I consider it food prep, meal prep. You know, so if you have someone in your house growing up, my dad would not eat a leftover. My mom could never get my dad to eat a leftover. And that's fine, everybody's different and everyone has different preferences. But if you have someone in your house that's like that, a spouse or the person who doesn't do the cooking, instead of doing like what I do where I make a huge pot of stroganoff and then we'll be able to eat this for, you know, some lunches, and maybe some dinners this coming week, you can prep extra meat and repurposing your extra meat and turning it into a completely different meal. I just added this entire container of Greek yogurt. Normally I would put sour cream in my beef stroganoff, but I bought this reduced on sale. It basically tastes like sour cream. It's a really thick Greek yogurt. If you've never had this, it's from Seattle and it is the best yogurt you'll ever eat. It's expensive. This container is $6.99, so I only buy it when it's 50% off. So I actually had to run to the pharmacy last week and pick some things up, and this yogurt was on sale. And, oh my gosh, let me tell you, it took all the willpower I had not to buy it, but I did not need it, so I didn't buy it. But I, I'm not even gonna lie to you, I went into the store, I saw it on sale, I grabbed every single one, I went to the pharmacy, I got what I needed, and then I went back and I put it back in the case. But I almost, the first week of the pantry challenge, I almost bought five of these containers of yogurt because they are so good and they are expensive. And so I only buy them when they are on sale. We're gonna mix this in and we're gonna let this warm through. I wanted to update you kind of how the dinner situation went. Josh and I both just ate. I'm still up canning beef broth. We're on our last canning session, so I'm pretty excited about that. We've got 18 quarts of beef broth that are gonna be canned up and going into the pantry. And I packaged up three leftovers for Josh for lunch. And we have some other leftovers that we still need to go through. So I am gonna put this in the freezer. This is the Ziploc bag that had the pasta in it, so I'm just reusing it, it just had pasta in it. And this is gonna go in the freezer for basically just another night. It's so basically I just made dinner for tonight, some leftovers for lunches, and then a freezer meal at the same time. I have a ton of pasta here. So I'm gonna come up with a different pasta sauce that will finish maybe, I don't know, we'll figure something out to use up this pasta. Hey friends, welcome back, it is Tuesday. Yesterday we just ate leftovers, so I figured you didn't need to see a day of just leftovers. We had some of the rice peel off from last week and stroganoff. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to transform this beef that we made when we did our bone broth into street tacos. We're gonna make street tacos. We are gonna be pickling up eight red onions. Maybe, maybe not all of them, maybe we'll saute some up too. I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna transform that beef yet into street tacos. I thawed out some corn so we can make some corn salsa. The reason we're gonna pickle the onions is if you've never had red onions pickled on tacos, you're missing out. It is one of the easiest pickles, the easiest thing to do. And so I wanted it for that. I keep telling you that these onions that I bought from this local farmer are starting to show some signs that they need to be eaten up. So I figured while I'm pickling one jar, why don't I just pickle them all and they'll last forever in my fridge. They're not moldy or or rotten or anything, they're just getting really soft. They were completely dry, and I wanna use them up before anything happens to them, before they go bad. And I have my canning funnel, and we're gonna put that on there. All I'm gonna do is cut these 
onions as thin as I can. This is gonna be a little difficult. These are pretty strong onions. This is red wine vinegar. I'm gonna pour a little bit in the bottom to get it started. And then as I slice, I'm just gonna put these onions right in here. I've learned that it helps to put a little bit of the vinegar in the bottom of your jar before you start filling it because then you're gonna have less air bubble issues. I'll leave a written recipe for this down in the description box if you're interested in it. I have tried making pickled onions a bunch of different ways. I've added sugar, mustard seed, peppercorns, because you can find a million recipes online. I have found that I can't really taste a difference when I add those extra ingredients. So I just do straight vinegar. I do straight red wine vinegar and red onions. That's my favorite combination and I like to reduce the amount of sugar and then it just makes it easier not having to get a bunch of different ingredients out of my pantry. But you certainly could add basically whatever spices you have on hand that you think would taste good in a red onion if you want. While I was chopping these onions and making these vinegar pickled onions, I had the thought, I have always wanted to try making fermented onions, which are basically the original pickle. And that is what we are gonna do here next. We are going to attempt to make some fermented onions. I just looked up the ratio for the salt to water liquid to create the brine for our pickles. And it's two cups of water to one tablespoon of salt. So I have tap water here. If you're fermenting, it's ideal if you use non-chlorinated water. And I'm on a well, so I don't have to worry about that. It's not the end of the world, but you will get a better product if you use non-chlorinated water. So I just have two cups of water, tablespoon of salt. We're gonna mix this till it's dissolved. I'm excited we're doing this together. I've always, always wanted to try fermented onions because I love pickled onions and I'm not a big fan of sauerkraut and fermented foods are so, 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 so good for you, but I don't really like sauerkraut, so if I like this, I think this will be a great way to try to get, I'm, I'm flinging onions all over the place. I think it'll be a great way to try to get onions into Josh and I's diet because Josh loves pickled onions too. If you wanna make a dish feel really expensive, try pickling onions because it's what you get on really fancy salads and tacos and things of that nature. If there's any floating pieces of onion, I'm going to try to scoop those out. All we do is set this on the counter for some period amount of time. <laughs> because I've never done this before, I'm not exactly sure what that time frame is. What I think we'll probably do is we will check on it every couple days. One, to make sure there's no mold happening on the top. I have never had mold happen from a vegetable ferment before, so I'm not super worried about that. And then we'll eventually give it a taste test. I'm thinking it's probably gonna be about a week, but I don't know because, I don't know, I've never done it. So we're gonna oven roast this corn. This is corn from the garden from last year. I blanched it and put it in a one of these food saver bags, and I've been really happy with that. We have our red onion a little bit of leftover red onion. I did strain this corn. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil, some pepper, and some seasoned salt to this. The recipe for the seasoned salt is linked down below. I'm gonna lay this in a single layer and we're gonna put this in a 425 degree oven for probably 15 or 20 minutes. When I make tacos for dinner, if we want leftovers for him or I to take to work, when I was working outside the home, I would make rice. I would either make like a Spanish style rice or like a Chipotle style rice. I got the rice out and then I was like, wait a minute, we have the quinoa we need to use up. So we're gonna try cooking quinoa for the first time. And we are going to use our seasoned tomato juice. I just released a video on how I make my salsa. And one of the byproducts is this beautifully seasoned tomato juice. It's so good. So we're gonna make quinoa with this juice. I've never made quinoa before, so I'm a little bit nervous about it. 
and I want to make two cups of it. I don't know how much it expands or anything like if it's like rice or what. The recipe says for every one cup of quinoa you want one and three quarters cup of liquid. I added a little extra quinoa so I'm going to go ahead and just add the rest of that. Now in this pot is where we're going to make our beef. I have a jar of home canned salsa verde. This is with tomatillos and I just put in my seed order tonight and let me tell you we are going to be growing a lot more tomatillos. This stuff is incredible. I did not make this last year because I didn't grow tomatillos last year. I've made it just to eat but I've never canned it and this is my husband's favorite so I thought it would be really good if I open a jar of this put it in here and we warm up our beef in the salsa verde. So we're gonna make a salsa verde flavored beef. I'm gonna put the lid on this and I'm gonna let this heat through. The recipe for the quinoa says bring to a boil, reduce to a simmer and cover. So I'm gonna reduce the heat and I'm gonna put this on here. And then we're gonna cook that for 10 minutes. I try to be as efficient as possible when I'm in the kitchen. We're all really busy and have things we need to be doing other than being in the kitchen. So if I have something on the stove warming or cooking where I don't actively have to be cooking, I try to take that time to either tidy up from what I am cooking or do the dishes or something like that. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm loading the dishwasher so that as soon as we're done, we can get it started and we can have a clean kitchen when we're done cooking. Does this always happen? Absolutely not. <laughs> Sometimes I don't have the energy to do the dishes and Josh is great about doing the dishes around here. Sliced up an avocado. I've had these avocados in my refrigerator for a month. I don't know why these have stayed so fresh in there for so long. I found them in the back of my refrigerator in my pantry. We are gonna cut up some cheese to slice. I'm definitely gonna slice way more cheese than we need for just today because I'm gonna get the box grater out, it's gonna get dirty, and that way I'll just have sliced cheese in the refrigerator. We are going to put a lemon in our corn salsa. I love cooking with fresh cilantro and parsley and lemon and all that, but during this challenge, I can't buy cilantro. If I had cilantro, I would put a whole bunch of cilantro in this if you're not a cilantro lover, we talked about that in one of my videos recently, you can always substitute fresh parsley for cilantro. We're still waiting for the meat and the quinoa to be done. We're not even eating the quinoa for dinner tonight, that's just gonna be for lunches. But I want it all done before we sit down to eat. And I'm gonna give this a taste. You wanna taste every component when you're cooking so you know that everything tastes good. Mmm. Everything is done for dinner. We have the tortillas there, the meat's done. I could probably turn that off. The last thing we were waiting for was this quinoa. And two cups makes a lot. It's not amazing. I honestly, I prefer white rice. I think, I don't know if most people do prefer white rice. Um, yeah, it's good. Not my favorite. So our dinner is done. It came together in a matter of minutes here. We have our tortillas wrapped up. I put them in the cast iron with a towel on the bottom and then another towel so they'd stay nice and warm. We have our cheese, plenty of cheese to get us through for quite some time. I did mix the avocado with the corn salsa because I thought that would just be easier to eat. We have our meat that is braised and beautiful but didn't take any time at all because we pre-cooked it. Homemade sour cream, nope, to bro homemade hot sauce, and our pickles. I definitely made too much quinoa. I should have only made one cup like the recipe called for, but I was trying to get it out of the pantry. We have two absolutely beautiful lunches slash dinners. I'm not sure when he'll eat them, but he can eat them whenever he wants. Or I'll eat them, I don't know, we'll see. I was gonna make a really nice dinner tonight, <laughs> but if you can see, I have goldfish crackers. It's six, Oh, that's my timer for, let me show you what I have in the oven. 
we have Oreos or chocolate sandwich cookies, I should say, because uh, they're not technically Oreos. And I have probably four more trays. Let me show you over here. It's going to get kind of messy. We've got just trays of Oreos. There's trays of Oreos down here. And we also have in the refrigerator some Oreos. So I think we are going to have leftovers for dinner tonight. It is 9.33. I finally finished wrapping up the Oreo video. Oh, it's dark in here. I should turn a light on, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and it's time for me to eat some dinner. Josh unloaded and loaded the dishwasher last night, and he did it again today. So the dishwasher is a little bit loud, and it's going, and I really appreciate him doing that for me. But I need to have some dinner, and I think I'm going to have tacos because those tacos last night were so incredible that... I'm gonna have those again for dinner tonight. It doesn't look as pretty right here right now as it did yesterday, but it's gonna taste just as good once I put it all together. And I realized I'm missing something. What am I missing? You guys want an honest look in someone's refrigerator? This is very, oh, I have a pot holder in here, of course. Doesn't everyone keep a pot holder in your refrigerator? Oh, the onions, that's what I'm missing. Very vulnerable showing someone the inside of your refrigerator without cleaning it out first, but that's the inside of my refrigerator. So good night and I will see you tomorrow and we will make dinner tomorrow. Good morning, I'm gonna have some granola for breakfast and then I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna edit all day. Is that right boys? Say good morning. Say good morning friends. <laughs> the, there are many Australian Shepherds if you've ever wondered what they are and this is Tibro and that's Orbit. Tibro is Orbit spelled backwards. He's the little brother. And so we had Orbit first, and then we just reversed his name to Tibro. Hey friends, it's Wednesday evening, and it is time to make some dinner. We are getting started. I'm gonna turn my cast iron on just a little bit. With dinner, it's 3.45, because at 5.30, I have a meeting with a friend. He's a graphic designer and working on a logo for me, which I am super excited about. And then at seven, my sister-in-law is having a baby. Well. She's not having a baby at seven. She's having a baby. So at seven, we're having a baby shower meeting because we're going to be planning a baby shower for her. So if I don't get dinner cooked now, I'm not sure when I'm going to have time to do it between those two meetings this evening. And if I wait to do it after, it's going to be really late and we're, we're I'm not going to want to cook and we're going to be really hungry. So I figured it'd be good to do it now so that I can have it warming. I am making chicken. I think the technical name is chicken piccata. But basically we are going to be pan searing some chicken thighs. We're gonna make a cream sauce with capers and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. We are going to serve it over the egg noodles that I cooked up two days ago for the stroganoff. And then for the vegetable, I'm gonna roast up some cauliflower. So I need to get this chopped up along with some garlic. This is homegrown garlic. I have my chicken thighs here. Normally this recipe is made with chicken breast, but I thawed chicken thighs. And this is butcher box chicken. It's organic chicken. I am thrilled with butcher box. That is definitely chicken is one of the things that I'm going to be ordering a lot through Butcher Box. So if you're interested in Butcher Box, I'll link them down in the description box. They have grass fed, grass finished beef, which I am really passionate about. They have organic chicken and cage free pork. So, so it's just a really cool company. So if you're interested in that, it will be linked down below, but let's get going. I have this heated. I'm not a huge fan of using paper towels, but this is one application I do use paper towels with. When you're searing your meat, you want the surface of the meat to be dry because if it has a bunch of moisture on it, it's gonna steam when it hits the hot pan instead of sear. And I want this to sear. So I use a paper towel and I pat dry. And then I can just throw the paper towel away. I am loving having my spices down there. That's been way more functional for me. And it's been making this process a lot more enjoyable, just being in the kitchen. I love being in the kitchen, but let me tell you, when things are organized, it sure makes it more enjoyable. Yep. I put them season side down so that I could season them on this side and I can flip them and I don't have to get my hands chickeny again. This is gonna go in the dishwasher. And then while this is searing, I'm gonna cut up the cauliflower and the garlic to make our sauce.
That right there is the Maillard reaction. That's that caramel color we want. Beautiful coloring. I put garlic, seasoned salt, and olive oil on our cauliflower. Now I'm going to put one of my favorite things on roasted vegetables, which is Korean red pepper flake. They have kind of a sweet, smoky, not really spicy flavor. If you've never had Korean red pepper flakes, I'm going to link them. They are fantastic on roasted vegetables. They are not, they're not spicy, but you get that like chili flavor. While our chicken is finishing cooking, I want to give you an update on the pickled onions or fermented onions. I'm going to open it and we're going to see if we can see some bubbles coming up the top. Let's see. I should hold it straight. We're going to smell it too. Ooh! This smells like onions. Do you see the bubbles down there? That's not air bubbles. That's the gas that the bacteria and yeast are producing during, there we go, during the fermented process. Put the lid back on and we'll let that keep going. Our chicken is perfectly browned and caramely and delicious. I'm going to take it off. You see how beautiful that looks? That is delicious. Okay, we've got a big crust on the bottom of our cast iron. We need all of this deliciousness into our sauce. So I have some white wine. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. I always keep a bottle of white wine and red wine in the refrigerator. Nothing expensive. Is if I open a bottle of wine and I don't love it. I mean, you don't want to use wine you don't like, but if, if I don't love it, then that becomes my cooking wine and I put it in the fridge. And when I cook with a wine that's not my favorite, I haven't really noticed, you know, it not tasting good in a dish. So we're going to scrape up all of those brown bits. That's called the fond on the bottom of your pan. And we are going to get that into the sauce. When I take my wooden spoon, can you see how it kind of drags? That's the texture I want of the wine to be. So it's thickened up just a little bit. I'm going to turn my heat down now. And then we're going to add cream. Mix that beautifulness in. One of my favorite things is seeing cream mix into whatever it is. And we're gonna add a ton of black pepper. Oh shoot, we forgot the garlic. Darn it. I don't wanna put it in now because it's gonna be raw. I did decide to go ahead and cook this garlic. Normally, I didn't want to put it in the sauce in its raw form because I didn't think it would get cooked enough and I didn't want completely raw flavored garlic in our beautiful sauce. So unfortunately we had to dirty up another pan, but oh well. Josh does the dishes around here. Okay, I don't want to brown the garlic, I just wanted to cook it. That smells so good. Garlic is one of my favorites. I don't even know what a caper is. Does it say on here what a caper is? I know it's a pickled something, but I don't know what plant it comes from, if it comes from a caper plant. I don't know. I guess I could Google it. I have some freeze dried cheese. If you want to watch this video, I can link it down below. I home freeze dried this. This is Parmesan cheese. I'm going to put maybe a quarter cup in there. We're going to toss in our chicken. I wish you guys could smell this. This is so easy. I mean, this probably took me, I mean, I guess I did have to cook the chicken, but probably 15 minutes to pull together. And if you make this for your family, they will be very impressed. Okay, let's give this a taste test. Oh my gosh. Needs a little pepper though. Oh. That is one of the best things I've made in a long time. We're gonna put the lid on here. Hey friends, it's Friday night and 
I kind of took most of, oh, let me turn this off so you can hear me a little bit better. It's Friday night and I kind of took most of the day off. I did a couple chores. I got the dishes done. I did a bunch of laundry. I did some computer work probably until about two o'clock and I hit a wall at two and I was just, I was done. I wanted to make curry tonight for dinner, but I pulled out a freezer meal. And so we're gonna have the green enchiladas that I made in the last freezer video that we did together. I'm just really glad I thought this out because I am not feeling cooking tonight and that's how freezer meals save me. So we're gonna get this in the oven. I didn't plan to do two kind of Mexican style dishes this week, but that's kind of what happens sometimes. And these enchiladas are so good. My husband, trust me, is not gonna mind eating this. The oven, I, it's not preheated, but this is something I do all the time where I just stick a freezer meal straight in the oven, not in a preheated oven. And today we're going to cook this at 400 degrees. Sometimes I cook it at 350. Sometimes I cook it at different temperatures, but these are thawed. So I'm just going to stick them straight into the oven and those will probably take 35 to 40 minutes. They do take quite a bit of time to cook freezer meals. And I'll show you what that looks like when it comes out. I was pretty tired this night, so Josh took the enchiladas out of the oven. You can see how nice and bubbly they are. You can take the foil off and let the cheese brown up just a little bit more, but we were hungry, so he just took it out and we had a wonderful dinner. Good morning, it's Sunday. I wanna give you a heads up on what we did yesterday. Yesterday was Saturday. Oh, but you okay, bud? We were working at my sister and brother-in-law's house all day. They are replacing their flooring. We we're laying hardwood floor. So in the morning, Josh and I took the last of the breakfast casserole and they treated us to lunch because we were there. And then we had those leftover enchiladas. I did not check in with you after those enchiladas were done. Josh took those out of the oven. So he's the one that showed you what those look like. And now it is Sunday. It's really, there we go dark in here, but the reason I want to show you why I'm doing this pantry challenge, I'm going to flip you around and I'm going to show you what I just found in my pantry, my walk-in pantry. I'm in here grabbing some spaghetti squash because we're probably going to eat three of these this week. It's hard to see, but there's two rotten spaghetti squash back there. This is really gross. If I didn't come in here and check that, that spaghetti squash could spread all that mold to the rest of them, which would be really devastating. <laughs> So I'm going to get those two moldy ones out. There is one that has a little spot on it. So we're going to eat this one today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these spaghetti squashes out, wipe them down with a vinegar water solution to kill any of those mold spores. Um, I just wanted to show you the reality of what happens. And this is why it's really important to check on your stores, because if I just let that go for another few weeks, that mold would have spread to quite a few more of them and we would have lost more than just two. Um, it is pretty sad that we lost two, but it happens and we're going to move on and we're going to learn from it and I'm going to try to be better about coming in here and checking. We haven't eaten any of this spaghetti squash since I grew it, so I need to be better about doing that and that is exactly why we're doing this pantry challenge, so I'm super excited about it. I'm getting ready to prep breakfast. Sorry if you can hear my dishwasher in the background. I'm getting ready to prep breakfast. We're going to have pumpkin steel cut oats and I'm going to be making, after I take a shower, dinner because I want to have that done. We're going to be making a curry together. I think we're going to do the musumum curry because that just sounds really, really good to me. And I am going live tonight to talk about our container gardening seed collection. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy about that. I, this is the first seeds that I've gotten in the mail. And so if you, the, the live will be out before this video comes out. So if you want to watch that, go over and check out the live where we talk about what we're gonna be growing in small spaces. We're gonna be challenging ourselves to grow as much as we can in a small space. I'm gonna be designating a small area of my garden to container gardenings, and we are gonna be trying to grow a lot of food in small spaces. In the meantime, if you're interested in checking these seeds out, I will link them down in the description box. I wanna say a huge thank you for hanging out with me as we did this week two of pantry challenge. This wasn't still yet a challenge because we had a lot of food in the house. Next week, I'm excited about the recipes we're going to be making, and if you are interested and you're new, please consider subscribing. If this video was entertaining or you got value out of it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are following along in the pantry challenge, I hope your challenge is going well and you're having fun, you're trying new recipes, you're pushing yourself. Like I said at the beginning of this, I don't want this challenge to be confining, restricting, stressful. It should be fun 
and we're just trying to push our creativity a little bit. And so if you guys are enjoying this, just thank you for coming along with me. And I hope you guys are having a great day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye guys.